minds want to know. Um, yeah, Take so two. One Take oh, two. Uh, 103 and we are starting the deal doctor live we, we we're going to broadcast it on a different channel here today but we decided to go back and do it differently so eric good uh, welcome i haven't seen you right, since thank last. you um but I, I i do want inquiring minds want to know what's what's the whole market thing going on yeah i went up to the up last year to visit last uh, year maybe a couple years just, ago i don't remember Time yeah, goes by and you're quick. just getting around to wearing this sweatshirt now getting around to wearing thing? it now so. Okay, fine. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, what happens when you get the package from the MLS that says you are you you have a grievance uh, filed against you from another broker or the public or or whatever. And and I guess the first thing I want to point out, the good news is we have some experience in this. So when you get the package, don't panic you know avoid panicking because we know how to uh to handle these things so yeah and, uh, and don't throw it away either well <laughs> yeah definitely don't throw it away um we want to get agents uh first of all you know don't panic but deal with it as quickly as possible get it to us as quickly as possible now we've actually created a little flow chart thing that says here's what has to happen when you get a grievance proceeding or conversely if you want to file a grievance against another agent uh, you know th there's a process so what's the first step eric in this whole process of uh, of grievances well one you want to make sure it's not a false filing i mean we need to make sure that uh, you really do have a grievance but the first thing that if you are on the side that you feel like you you want to file a grievance you need to pick up the phone and call the deal doctors that's step one let's let's have a conversation first to try to determine whether this is a true or potential uh, code of ethics violation that we can file agreements for and when it's coming in the other direction very often the agent doesn't even realize that a grievance has been filed against them until it lands in our lap and we advise them that we've gotten this uh this this filing against the agent so let's take it from that moment what sure. happens when an agent is first informed that they have a grievance against them what should the agent do calling the deal doctors is or broker support is really, really important. Wouldn't you agree? <clears throat> Definitely, yeah, and because you have to understand once you get that document, you have a certain number of days to respond. So we're on a timeline that we need to follow. And too many times, it seems like we might get this, re we might get this letter or notice, but now we only have a week to try to scramble and try to get things together and respond. And we encourage you, to if you get that immediately get it over to us so that we can start working with you to provide that response and, and these things do take some time let's face it it's not like you can just say oh i didn't do it okay it's yeah. done. there's your response <laughs> well <laughs> but we know you probably didn't do it more about we need to be able to prove something <laughs> we're going to talk more about the investigative process that we go through in trying to support the agents in a situation like this but the very first step uh, it, is we if you are a team member if you are a member of a team you need to get your team leader involved immediately they need to be on board and understand what is going on and that really is is the is the job of the agent if they have something that has been filed against them they really need to get their team leader involved make sure that everyone is working together in this process to address all of these things now next step is we need to distribute those copies of the grievances to the point people, broker support people, deal doctors, um, and in the uh, designated realtor and the principles of five-star real estate. Immediately, it's going to go out to everybody again, so we can work together on it uh, as a team. Um, so when you get one of these things, Eric, what's the first thing that um, you're going to put together? A, a timeline maybe you talked about uh you know yeah we, we want to 
we, we try to go through and first of all, have a conversation with the agent to hear their, their, their side of the story. And then we're going to ask them to please put together a timeline of events. And we can also go into dot loop and see timeline of events because everything gets captured. There's a history trail uh, in dot loop when you share a file, when you receive something. So there's, there's proof in dot loop always for us to be able to dive into to help the agent say, well, yes, you did share this file at this date and time. Here's the proof. Uh, because you make it a claim that, well, you never shared the final executed documents. Mm -hmm. Who knows, right? So, and, and Don is very good at being able to track down uh, proof <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> I, I, I love the forensic end of this job. I really do. I, I think I was a, 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 a some sort of forensic person at some point in my life. Um, because yes, we can go into that acti activity log and we can identify uh, where some claims are absolutely false being alleged against our uh, our agents uh, by the activity log itself. So um, make us aware early on of, of, uh, of all of the circumstances. But there also is the process of establishing deadlines. As you pointed out, Eric, uh, just because a uh, you know a, a response is due by, let's say February fifteenth, for example, if it's due by February fifteenth, we can't get the response from an agent about what happened through the whole process uh, on middle of the day February fourteenth, because we have to go in and identify what's happened, um, you know, verify it, find the proof for it. Um, and then draft a response that is going to ultimately be uh, signed and submitted by uh, our broker, uh, whoever is the designated realtor in that market. So, yeah, and, and, the, and the big thing is that we can't just make a claim that this wasn't done or this is, it's not a, an opinion piece that we're writing here. Right. It, it is hard facts that we, that we need to work with in order to help the agent. And we also encourage agents okay, let's say you did screw up. It's not the end of the world, but you know what? Just let us know so that we know what happened. Uh, we don't, we can prevent it from happening again. And if we're, hey, if, if it is found that uh, there's no defense for it, then, that, then that's what it is. But, but we're still going to help you move forward and get over this. Exactly. Um, and, and I know that you and I and, and all of broker support and, and the brokers, um, tell agents, like, we've been down this road before. We understand that mistakes happen. Um, the, depending on how egregious they are, will depend on, uh, will determine the amount of, of uh, you know, penalty an agent may face with the board. But we're going to try our best to mitigate that uh, and to disprove some of the allegations that, that have been brought against the agent. One of the things we found, and again, um, add to this if you like, one of the things we found is that very often people making a grievance complaint against one of our agents will do what I call kitchen sinking. They'll throw everything into the argument, including the kitchen sink. And sometimes the kitchen sink has absolutely nothing to do with the legitimate portion of their, their grievance. Well, when they throw in the kitchen sink, it undermines the legitimate portion of their complaint and very often will impeach the credibility of, of the person making the complaint. So we want to know it all. Uh, we, would you find, do you find that to be true, Eric? Definitely. It, you know, if people really wanted to go after someone, they'd stick to the main points of their, of their complaint and not try to throw in every single thing because they felt that they were wronged. It almost sometimes these grievances turn into an emotional response from someone, and not true. It not true uh, fact. Yeah. So when we get that complaint, we're going to distribute it out. We're going to identify um, the deadlines for getting a response back to us from the agent, um, and we're going to request it in writing that we have a chronological, step by step time frame of everything that happened and refuting the allegation and so that we can go in and identify in the activity log 
and in the documents, for example, how this is just simply not true, if in fact that's the case. Um, yeah, so Don, let me add to that too. So when you are conducting your, your business in a transaction, it's very important to file all of your emails into maybe a folder in Gmail or whatever platform you're using and keep your texts, downloading your text into uh, a file somewhere that you can save because you never know when you might need this information. And we encourage you to keep this for two to three years. Three years would be ideal uh, because you never know. And we see, you know, uh, not so much grievances, but law court cases or, or, or filings against people that come up, you know, two and a half years later. And I think some of the statutes are three years in, in real estate. But again, we'll, we'll leave that to the attorneys. But it, the, the point I'm trying to make here is make sure you're keeping all of your documentation and don't just discard it once once you close on that file because you might need it somewhere down the road. Oh yeah, emails and text messages, um, absolutely. Because in just two of the recent ones, I think one was 86 pages of emails and texts. Another one was 76 pages of emails and texts. I know we had one back about a year ago that was somewhere in the neighborhood of two to 300 pages of communications and details. So that, that's why I do everything verbal. <laughs> Just stop. Don't even go there. Just stop. All right. So um, another step that is often forgotten is when you get one of these uh, grievances uh, against you, whether it's a lawsuit or just a consumer complaint uh, or a grievance of the board, I encourage the agent to reach out to anyone who can corroborate their story. Was there a buyer or seller involved that can say, no, my agent didn't do that? By all means, try to go out and get witnesses uh, in, in your behalf. Would you agree, Eric? Is that something that, that they should yeah, be Yeah, if, if they're available and if they're willing to want to provide that uh, information, even if it's a quick note or an email making a statement, anything can be beneficial for you, for the for the agent. Okay. So um, that's we don't have to dwell on this a lot. Um, nope. This really applies to uh, all communications, uh, complaints, grievances, lawsuits, threats of lawsuits. As soon as you get that information, uh, get in touch with broker support, get in touch with the deal doctors. We'll help you, uh, you know, guide you through it and, and um, hopefully get to the other side with as little damage as possible. So if you have any yeah, questions... And, and and the last thing I would say is don't panic when you get these. It's part of our business. It's part of our practice. This is things that we have to deal with as licensed real estate agents. It, it's it's something that we don't want to have to see, but they will come up. And just know that uh, Five Star is here to support you to get you through it. And we will. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it's it's easy to say don't panic because you're going to panic anyway. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would if I was in that same situation. Understand, though, that you got a lot of years of experience here to help you. There's Eric and me uh, and uh, uh, Greg, Paul, Tracy, um, Cindy, all of us who've been down the road with these grievances, lawsuits, and all that. We can help guide you. Give us a call. We're ready to help you. So if you have any questions, um, post it in the uh, within the thread. We'll answer the questions throughout the day. Again, thank you all for joining. And Eric, good to see you. I, I still not getting the whole uh, Marquette sweatshirt thing, but you know, it's it, it is it's cold, I guess. It's <laughs> you know, it's February, so you get to wear Marquette sweatshirts. There so, you go. All right. Y'all have right. a good day. We'll see you have next a good week. week. Take care.